This conference will now be recorded. Greetings, everyone. Happy Wednesday. It is August 5th, 2020. I am Lindsay Sin, Deputy Secretary for Women Veterans Affairs here at CalVet. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you're all staying healthy uh, mentally and physically, and we appreciate you taking time out of your day to hear more about um, our conversation today. Uh, today, I'll be talking to CEO of Service to School, Christine Schwartz. But before we start that conversation, just a few reminders for our webinar. If you're joining us today, if this is your first time, know that we do regular webinars to educate our women veteran community as well as advocates for women veterans. You can find our previous re previously recorded webinars from our website. That's calvet.ca.gov forward slash women vets. You can also look and see uh, the registration for our upcoming webinars. And we do have another webinar coming up August 19th at 1 p.m. Typically, our webinars are on Wednesday at 1. And you can always find that information on our Facebook page, Calvet Women Veterans, or on our website. After this webinar, you will also receive via email a survey, the video recording, and the PowerPoint presentation. And you can also find that information on our website. We do ask you to complete the survey. We want to know how we're doing. We want to know where we can improve and what other topics you all would like to hear from us. We are recording this webinar, but please remember to mute your phones. Right now I have everybody muted from uh, my desktop so that we can hear our presenter loud and clear. So today we are talking to Christine. Christine approached CalVet Women Veterans and wanted to talk more about women in um, top tier schools and Ivy League schools. So women veterans are joining um, our universities and college campuses at uh, rates like we've never seen before. We know this. And we know that women veterans have higher educational attainment. They have bachelor's degrees and graduate degrees at higher levels than their male counterparts. But uh, and we also know that um, there are a higher percentage of women veterans who are actually enrolled in school. This data looks a little bit old. It's from 2014, but we know this has been the trend continuing on for the last several years. You see more women veterans using their GI Bill. More of them are actually enrolled in school, and uh, they are more likely to have that some college to bachelor's degree to an advanced degree over their male veteran counterparts. Well, we also know this is generally true for the non-veteran population, that women have also surpassed men in their educational attainment here in California, uh, possibly nationwide, and this is for all women, not just uh, women who have served in the military. But now we're going to find out what's really happening with women who are trying to get into top-tier schools, Ivy League schools, graduate schools. Are they getting the best education for their money? And are they actually matriculating on these college campuses, um, uh, these storied institutions in our country, uh, at, at the same rates that we would like to see? It's possible that we need to do our job to get more women to the best schools that they can possibly go to. So that's why we're going to talk to Christine today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and introduce Christine. And she will take over the presentation in just a second. One second. So Christine Schwartz is a former, arm, former Army officer, and she's a military spouse. And she's passionate about supporting and enabling veterans as they enter a new phase of their lives. A combat veteran herself, Christine spent five years on active duty before working in the tech sector managing programs at both startups and a nonprofit. Before her role as CEO, Christine served as Service to Schools uh, COO, and prior to that, she was the Director of Undergraduate Operations. Christine was chosen for the George W. Bush's Institute's Stand to Veteran Leadership Program, where she was a scholar in 2018. So Christine, thank you so much for joining us and for having this conversation with me today. I'm gonna go ahead and let you take it away. 
Absolutely. Thanks, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. I'm Christine Schwartz. Um, thanks for the intro. I, I won't bore you talking about myself too much because we have a lot of other great things to talk about today. Um, as Lindsay mentioned, there are a ton of female service members and veterans that get out of the service and use their GI Bill. Um, you know, some of those stats are saying 20, 25% to 40% of GI Bill users are women. Um, however, at service to school, we only work with about 12 to 15% of vet female veterans a year. So I approached Lindsay because I said, hey, where are all our female vets? Why aren't they coming to service to school so we can help them get into the best schools in the country? Um, so thank you for having me today. And I will talk a little bit about our program. So service to school, our mission statement is to prepare transitioning military veterans for their next chapter of leadership by helping them gain admission to the best college or graduate school possible. So what does that mean? Well, we are here to help service members um, get into college, obviously, and make sure that they are using their GI Bill in the best possible way. Um, we want you to use that hard-earned GI Bill at a college that will give you a great education and a foundation for your future job. And we want you to apply and get into the best college for your future. So that could be academically, it could be culturally, Maybe it's financially, maybe it's geographically. That is all up to you, but we wanna help you get there. Um, our service is completely free to all service members and veterans. And what we do is we connect you with a mentor who helps you with different aspects of your college application to ensure you get to where you wanna go. So that's the what, but here's the why. So why did we start service to school? Um, really, there are three reasons. The first is that most service members and veterans are outsiders to the college admissions process. And this is because 60% are first generation college students, and they're often the first in their family to consider going to college. And then almost all of us veterans lack um, convenient access to knowledgeable mentors and advisors. The second reason that we have, you know, sometimes problems applying to school is that we have all of these interesting experiences, but we don't know how to communicate them to college admissions committees. So perhaps we've deployed or we've led dynamic teams. Um, we've had all these interesting different trainings, but we don't know how to break that down so it's interesting to a college admissions audience. The third reason we were created is because only 10% of student veterans go to a high graduation rate college. So a high graduation rate college is a school that has at least 70% of their population graduate within six years. So if you think about that, that means only 10% of student vets are going to a college where they're likely to graduate in six years. And that's really a problem. I mean, we're using our GI Bill so we can graduate from college, so we can go get a great job. Um, if you work with service to school, 86% 80, of our student vets go to a high graduation rate college. So we obviously want you to work with service to school so we can make sure you are going to one of those high graduation rate colleges. So that is the what and the why. Now this is the how. So how can we serve you? Well, it's really easy. Um, if you are a veteran or a transitioning service member, all you have to do is sign up on our website. Um, there is a green sign up button right at the top if you head to our website, which we will send out. And then you're gonna want to click on undergrad admission support. Now, if you have already attended undergrad and you're thinking about going to grad school, please pick one of our grad school programs. We have MBA, law school, and other grad programs. So master's in nursing, master's in teaching, whatever it might be. Once you sign up, um, the service to school staff is going to do an onboarding phone call with you. During that onboarding phone call, we're going to learn about what you did while you were in the military and what your higher ed plans are. So say you were, I don't know, a 92 alpha in the army and you just got out a year ago and now, in your, now you're at community college and you're planning to transfer. We will intake all that information and then we're going to pair you up with a mentor. We call these mentors ambassadors. And these people have been in your shoes before. 
So they have been an undergrad, they are likely a veteran, and they are going to teach you everything you need to know about applying to college. Um, these are just a couple of our ambassadors. I always love to give Kayla a shout out because she is actually an astronaut. So when she became an ambassador a couple of years ago, she was in, in school or she was an astronaut candidate and, and now she is one. So pretty cool. Once you are paired up with one of our ambassadors, they are going to help you train. And we came up with this acronym because, you know, we are all veterans and we just love acronyms. Um, but aside from that, we've identified these five important areas of the college application process, which are test prep, resume and trans transcript review, application and essay re review, interview prep, and networking assistance. So your assigned ambassador is going to help you with all of these areas. If you are an undergrad, I would say the focus area for you is going to be transcript review as well as application and essay review. Um, so if you are in community college or if you went to school before joining the military and you need to collect your transcripts, or maybe you need to plan out this semester so you can make sure that you transfer, our ambassadors will help you align your schedule to make sure those credits are likely to transfer, transfer or help you take classes that are most, um, I guess, not, I guess would be the most attractive to admissions committee. So if you're in California and you are at a local community college and your dream is to transfer to Stanford, then we are gonna help you make sure you get classes on that transcript that um, would be attractive to Stanford. We also will provide you with a bunch of different guidebooks. Um, our undergrad guidebook is up to 50 pages. It's gonna cover all those things in, in the train methodology again. Um, it's basically like a self-help book for everything you need to know as a veteran applying to a four-year school. Um, we also have a specialty program called VetLink. So if you come to service to school, we will help you apply to any school in the country. Um, and knowing that you all, all are in California, um, if you wanted to go to school in San Diego, in LA, wherever it might be, we will help you to apply. Um, but we also have a partnership with 20 select colleges and universities where we take that a step further. So not only do we help you with your application, but we actually communicate with the admissions offices at our partner schools. Um, so in California, our two partner schools are Pomona College and Stanford University. So before your application even hits, hits their doors, they know your name, we have sent over a bunch of information about you, they know your military service record, all of those things. This partnership um, greatly enhances the applicant's likelihood of getting into the university. And that's often because the colleges have been able to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with the veterans and really dig into um, just their military history and get to know them as a person. So are we successful? Because if we are, have built this program, we wanna make sure that we are successful. Um, the answer is yes. If you use service to school, and if you are attending this webinar and you do, don't plan on going to undergrad, but you have a friend or someone you advise that is thinking about undergrad, definitely please refer them to service to school. Um, if you use a mentor in our service, you have a 90% acceptance rate. So you have a 90% chance of getting into at least one of the schools that you apply to. Where are veterans enroll? So veterans, they are going to schools across the country from California to Maine, to Pennsylvania, to Washington State, you name it. Um, some of the best schools in the country, but also whatever school is the best for you. I think sometimes when we talk about, hey, this is a top tier university or this is an Ivy League, people can feel like if they apply to a school that's a non-Ivy League, it's inferior. I don't want anyone to think that. We want to help you apply to any school you would love to attend, and there are hundreds of amazing schools in this country. Um, some of our other partner schools not in California include Texas A&M, the University of Michigan, Emory University, University of Chicago, um, Williams College, Amherst College, 
And then we've also sent students on this whole list from Penn State to Virginia Tech to University of Alabama. So whatever your dream is, let us know. These are a couple of our success stories. Um, and, you know, again, all over the country from Columbia to Yale to Brown um, and a couple more here. Hillary and Allegra, I believe Hillary was former Navy. Yep, and she ended up at Yale and Allegra was former Marine Corps. Um, our veteran applicants. So we serve every branch of service, um, you know, from Coast Guard to Army to Air Force. Um, we do serve, maj the majority is the Army and that makes sense since the Army is the biggest service. Um, but it does not matter as long as you are a veteran or a service member. Our applicants are interested in a variety of majors, um, a lot of business and a lot of STEM. Um, you can see that in that pie chart. The 50% do make up non-STEM, but we do work with 30% STEM students. So I think that's awesome. Women in STEM coming in, majoring in, in computer science, mathematics, you name it. We work with veterans from all 50 states. Um, California we, is, is the biggest state we work with. 22% of our applicants come from California. Um, I love working with students from California. I think you all have such great resources for veterans. The community college system in California does a wonderful job of setting people up for transfer. So we will just take it a step further by um, continuing to support you in that higher ed journey. Again, our services are completely free. All you have to do is sign up, of on, sign up on our website. We pair you with that mentor. We learn about what you want your journey to be and we make sure that you are on the right path. So I know that was pretty quick. Would love to answer any specific questions regarding veteran transition to higher ed, um, resources, resource planning, anything like that. I will change the presenter back to Lindsay, um, but I am here to answer questions. Thanks, Christine. We really appreciate the information. I know we're going to have uh, several questions from our audience just based on how the chat has gone. So um, I would definitely like to open this up to questions. If uh, I, I think the first thing that came up that I'll go ahead and ask, that way we can keep everybody muted so we hear the answer. People are interested in knowing about how, how to become mentors or ambassadors. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so to become a ambassador, same thing, if you head to our website, which is service to school.org, there is a green button that says volunteer with us and you just hit that and then you choose the program that you want to volunteer with. So either undergrad, MBA, law school. Um, we, we do ask that you have a degree in whatever you're going to mentor on. Um, but yes, we could always use more mentors, specifically female mentors would love to have more. And what's the typical number of hours, for example, for people that are also working uh, what sure. can they out of being an ambassador and a mentor? Mm -hmm. So it does depend on your student um, or your applicant. You know, sometimes we have we have applicants that say, "Hey, these are my five schools, and I already have my essays done, and I just need a second set of eyes and you know a little little coaching and a little enthusiasm." We have other students that. Um, haven't even identified where they want to apply to college and they really need coaching on picking out the right fit. Um, tons of encouragement around like, hey, are you going to take the SAT? W when is it coming up? Have you started essays? So I will say it depends on the student. But when you sign up to be an ambassador, um, a staff member will talk to you kind of about, you know, how many hours you can give, what kind of applicant you want to work with all of your preferences and then we will align someone accordingly um, and i also will say it depends on the time of the year so just like the admission cycle goes it's going to be busier in the fall and in the winter than it is in the summer so i would expect a couple hours a week um, in the winter and then not much to do in the summer Okay, good to know. Yeah, that might give people a better idea of what to expect. I imagine the time of year is uh, um, a big issue 
So certainly that's why we wanted to have this conversation today too, Christine, because I know people would be setting up, uh, them, setting themselves up and turning into a new school year and really thinking about that next step, whether it's transferring to a, di a different four year or um, going to grad school and those applications can often be due come springtime, early spring. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, so we have an, a bunch of other questions too, which is absolutely great. Um, let's see, we would like to know, we've talked about being an ambassador and a mentor and how many hours and what that can be like. People know to go to service to school to sign up for that. Uh, we also have folks that um, are definitely interested in applying for four-year school, uh, folks that want to get into specific schools, so they are naming those specific schools too. Um, so hopefully as uh, you have ambassadors and mentors here in California that have gone to different schools, if we have somebody who wants to go to USC, for example, or law school here in California, you have uh, mentors to do to help with that. Absolutely. And that's all part of the onboarding process. We will learn that about you. If you say, hey, my dream is USC, we will make sure we align with someone um, who either went to USC or can advise on that. Okay. Yeah, we, and we have a lot of UC, uh, USC grads here in California, too, uh, among our veteran community. So I know we can help with that, too. Um, and then people are asking about uh, what if you've already gotten accepted to a school, but you are looking for financial assistance. Can service to school help with that? So we do not do financial assistance, um, unfortunately. There, we do, there are some scholarships you can apply for through service to school on our website, ones with Lockheed Martin, but no, we are just here to help you get into college. Okay. So some scholarships for financial assistance on your website. Um, otherwise, if that question is posed to your mentors and ambassadors, are they able to kind of give people some, some um, I don't know, just uh, tips and tricks? Yeah, so as far as financial advice, you know, there there's a lot of nuances with how much GI Bill do you have? Is the school yellow ribbon funded? Um, how much GI Bill do you have left? Um, and so your ambassador will get into that with you. What we do know is there at, at universities, especially smaller universities, there are a lot of grants for veterans um, and even scholarships. It's just knowing where to look. I think a lot of times veterans don't think that there's scholarships out there because they think, oh, well, I have the GI Bill, so like there's definitely not a scholarship, but there are a ton of scholarships out there. And so just doing doing the research, doing the work, and making sure you apply for those things um, is, is going to go a long way. And then another thing with grants at universities, so when you say you're a senior in high school and you're applying to college, those colleges are going to look at your parents' W-2s or your parents' finances when they either give out scholarships or grants. As a veteran, you know, they're not, they're not going to be looking at your, your parents' financials. They're going to be looking at yours. So if you've been a veteran for a while, um, or say, you say you're a veteran and you haven't been working for a year or two because you're in, in community college full time or you're just not working, um, you will probably likely be able to apply for a pretty substantial grant. So yes, ambassadors will help you with that. Um, but like I said, the, the financial piece of college is, is very nuanced. So just make sure you're doing your research. Okay, great. Um, and then uh, one suggestion that Marcy has regarding that question is that uh, financial aid at your school and your VA certifying official at the campus can help you with that. Absolutely. And then I would and then I would still suggest that um, they connect with you uh, to hook you to hook up with a mentor who perhaps went to that school or knows that school system because then they can still have some financial aid conversations potentially or just some ideas. Yes. That would be good. Okay. Um, and then a lot of people are asking about uh, uh, when they don't have access to a GI Bill here in California. Uh, yes, there is the um, college fee waiver benefit if you're a dependent of a veteran. Um, there are a couple other benefits available at the federal level, so through the VA to um, dependents of 100% service-connected veterans. So I always recommend to call the VA, talk to their, um, their GI Bill folks about uh, what you are eligible for, because uh, oftentimes you may be eligible for more than one uh, educational benefit with the VA, depending on when you served and for how long 
or depending on uh, who you're married to and um, how they claim you as a dependent. The other option is a, t a tuition fee waiver here in California. If you're a dependent of a veteran, uh, you may have that available to you, but um, all of that information is on our website, calvet.ca.gov, um, under the uh, Dependents Fee Waiver Program. We can also ask questions uh, and answer questions and get you more information via email. That's womenveterans at calvet.ca.gov. Let's see, a couple other questions. Uh, we've got uh, uh, more questions about how long someone would be able to stick as an ambassador with a student veteran. Um, Liz is asking, is that uh, two years, four years? How long sure. does that really it's last? usually, yeah, it's usually about a year to a year and a half. Um, most of our students, you know, we try and catch them at a sweet spot. If they come to us and they say, hey, I, I have five years until I'm getting ready to, to go back to college, that's usually a little, maybe a little too early to start planning. Um, and so when they're about 18 months out, we go ahead and make sure that they're paired up with that ambassador and they are on the right track. Uh, but there can also be, you know, hey, somebody came in January and they want to apply for transfer in March and you only end up working with them for two or three months. But most likely it's going to be about 18 months to six months. Okay, got it. Um, and then another question we have here is um, LSAT prep. What test prep is available through service to school? Any? Sure. So if you sign up for our law school program, you and you go through some of the, they will ask you some questions and you will have a couple do outs. Um, but if you fill all those out, we will give you a coupon code for um, an LSAT prep discount at Manhattan Prep, which is pretty substantial. Um, and then when working with your ambassador, they should be able to provide you with um, pointers to other resources. We have, there's all sorts of blogs out there, test hacks, all that sort of stuff. Great. That's good to know. Okay, a couple other questions we've got here. Um, so let's see. Um, looks like Victor has a question about attendance of veterans with 100% service connected rating. Yes. So the California benefit, the tuition fee waiver benefit is just for dependents of veterans. So for 100% um, service connected veterans, for their dependents, they do have an option of a fee waiver for any UC or CSU uh, uni um, college and university here in California. Uh, that also applies to community colleges. Um, so the way you fill out for that benefit is to Download the paperwork, you can find it on our website, and you take that into the County Veteran Service Office in your county, and they verify your eligibility, they give you the form, you take that back to your, um, uh, either your business office at your college or university, and if you have questions, you can always ask your certifying official on your campus, they can help you with that. But essentially, that's the fee waiver. There are various uh, categories of eligibility for the fee waiver as well. So uh, one might be for 100% service connected veteran, the other might be um, income based, uh, depending on how much that student has made uh, in that past year and whether or not they'll qualify via the income threshold. So you do wanna pay attention to that. And again, there are benefits at the federal level for dependents of veterans. So 100% service connected veterans, their dependents also are eligible for uh, dependent Educational Assistance Chapter 35. So take a look at that stuff as well. Um, and then what I like about this conversation today with Christine is that not only do we have some folks who are actually ambassadors and mentors to service to school on here, but we also have a lot of folks who are, uh, who are actually educators who work on college campuses. And uh, we'd love to make sure that any of our veterans who are on the call today who need some of this support about financial aid and test prep and how to get into these schools, you've got service to school and then you've got a, a whole group of people who are actually working on college campuses who can help you too. So let's make sure we can, um, we can certainly connect everybody. Email us at womenveterans at calvet.ca.gov, then we can definitely help folks um, uh, get connected when you have questions about specific campuses or you need more detailed answers to your questions. So Christine, I loved how you um, you talked about um, the issue of 
the top tier schools and um, Ivy League schools, but really the school of your choice. And you can choose a school uh, for a variety of reasons. It could be a cultural affinity to that school. It could be a geographical location. It can be what makes most sense for you because of the course of study. Um, how, how is it going when you hear back from students that you all have helped get onto these college campuses? How, how are they being incorporated as um, students who happen to be veterans as well? Yeah, so, so great. Um, we have, you know, we, once you do service to school, we like to make sure you stay in our community, we stay in touch with you. Um, and we of course hope that you always stay in touch with your ambassador and that you form, you know, a, a lifelong relationship there. Um, but with our veterans, you know, it, once they go to school, veterans are so great at finding other veterans, which you, you don't necessarily need to, to help. It's like they, they go into the classroom and they're little magnets to each other. Um, but when we do do our check-ins, you know, people are, people are happy. Um, especially at schools where they're, where I'm seeing smaller class sizes, where I'm seeing great career services. Um, just access to professors. You know, last year we did a poll on how supported you felt by faculty. And um, our students said that they felt even more supported by faculty at colleges than their peer students. Um, and I mean, this was almost 100% of the people we, we polled. So they are doing great, they're thriving. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm, hopefully, I'm hoping loving their fits. We, we, we rarely have people come to us and say, hey, I got into so-and-so school and I'm, I'm unhappy. It has happened once or twice, but um, we're really there to make sure that that doesn't happen. And, you know, I think it's great saying, hey, get into a top tier college, but it's more important to us to make sure that where you're going to go, you know, you, you do love and you do thrive. And so we spend so much time on the front end, uh, making sure you identify that correctly. Thank you. That's excellent. Yeah, you want to make sure that your college experience fits with, um, with what you really need and want um, out of life. I mean, it's, uh, you, you know, you've served your country, you've potentially put yourself in, in grave danger at times, or at least, uh, you know, been more than inconvenienced. So if you've got this great educational benefit or an opportunity to finish your, um, your higher education, and it's a goal you've set for yourself, uh, I think everybody wants to make sure you go to the school that works for you and uh, it's fit for your life. So Yeah, and there's going to be different, um, every, every situation is different. Um, and that's why, too, you know, we can't go so far into the financial piece. Um, we do, you know, say, hey, have your ambassador help you research that. But every story is different. It could be I need to finish school in 18 months or it could be, hey, I want to I want to take four years and take it easy and, you know, lay out in the quad or whatever it might be. Yeah, that was definitely my goal. <laughs> um, Wonderful. Uh, and then uh, it looks like some folks would like to have you present to uh, to their various groups. So um, how, Christine, do we connect you with anybody who's interested in having service to school present to uh, their campuses or their student groups? Um, yeah, absolutely. And, okay. And then, Anne, do you guys, um, are you guys running any uh, regular technical trainings or introductory uh, Zoom meetings or webinars that folks should know about? Yes. So in September, we're going to do a town hall, which is going to be open to the public, like Q&A, come learn about service to school, ask admissions questions. Um, but if you can follow us on social media, um, and this can be either LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, we post on there all the time about upcoming webinars, and anybody anybody can sign up for those. Last week, we did a test optional webinar. So as you all, I'm sure, have heard, most schools are not going to be re requiring the SAT or ACT for the next two years. Um, and so we brought in Notre Dame, University of Chicago, Carleton College to talk about what test optional means. And all of these things are available to the public. So follow us on social media and, and check those out. Um, additionally, my email is pretty easy. It's just my first name, Christine, at service, the number two, school.org. 
Um, we would love to get in touch with your organizations, present to your veterans, your students, whoever that might be. Um, as far as veterans go, and it's specifically enlisted veterans, a lot of them end up transferring. So perhaps they had credits from before they joined the military, their time in the military, or maybe they're in college, but they want to transfer to a four-year school or a different school. We work with a ton of transfer students. Would love to talk about transferring. That's great news, Christine. I know we talked about that previously, uh, given that that's probably the highest number of um, student veterans here in California. They are enrolled, uh, they are enrolled in um, a community college and are looking more at uh, transferring. Uh, although we do have some uh, students who, like yourself, if, especially if they were officers, they're either looking to go to grad school or they look like they were going to um, have an easier time transitioning because they'd have some of the undergraduate work already done or all of it done. But I do think here in California, that's what we see the most of is our, um, our potential transfer students from community colleges. So. Yes. Awesome. And again, I, I, I think California just does a great job. They have great articulation agreements. Um, so many community colleges are good at uh, advising on transfer. And so just, yeah, I uh, always applaud the community college or the California community college system. Great. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We have some great community colleges, a hundred and I think 114, uh, maybe a few more than that. So uh, it's a good opportunity to, to look at what schools to go to next. So, um, and we certainly have some more questions on here. Uh, a lot of it is about financial aid, which I totally understand is always the biggest consideration. Uh, you can go to any school you want potentially, but how do you pay for it? Um, and so, you know, folks, I think what we'll do is even look at future webinars on that topic because uh, we want you guys to be able to do as much as you can to fulfill your higher education goals, but you do have to pay for it. Um, and we don't have all of the um, all of the answers to those questions here on this webinar because some of that is very California specific or system specific. So, uh, so we'll try and set something up to where we can talk about more about financial aid. If you do have those questions, though, we really encourage you to get a hold of us. I'm in veterans at calvet.ca.gov, and among our very large and experienced network of veteran service advocates and employees here at Calvet, we can definitely help you guys and see what see what answers you might need. Awesome. Um, and and I do like to say I like I, I wish I was a financial aid expert, but you know, there's <laughs> four thousand schools in the country and each one is so so nuanced. But um what I will I do say is sometimes what you see online as far as the the not price of a school but the tuition that's not always what you are going to end up paying um, like i said there could be grants um, it, the school might or might not have yellow ribbon funding you might be eligible for scholarships that you're unsure of until you're in the school um, so consider all those things before you go to a website and it says like oh fifty thousand dollars i mean that would absolutely scare me too but that might not be accurate once everything is taken into consideration and you talk to that va certifying official and all of those things yes absolutely uh and some private graduate schools will actually offer a pretty competitive tuition rates if they have yellow ribbon and gi bill more than more than you would think because they often have private scholarships that they can help with too um but you know by and large you can't be you can't beat just some of the public education we have in california especially for your money but it takes out it takes some planning if you're going to start at a community college you know you might not want to use your gi bill if you can if you can swing not having to do that at that time instead use um use different grants and things like that and waivers where you can otherwise uh you know, definitely look into the uh, number of GI bills for which you may be eligible. You may have 36 months of one benefit, another 12 months of another benefit, and then you may even have uh, something like vocational rehabilitation if you're disabled, if you get approved for that. So there are other options out there. So um, anybody else, I'm going to open it up. Uh, you know, Christine and I had a bit of a conversation and we've covered some of the questions in our chat window. Do any of our participants want to ask uh, Christine a question or ask Calvet a question at this time? Uh, 
Okay, it sounds like uh, unless people are unmuting themselves, we don't have too many more questions. Um, so, Christine, I hope we can continue our conversations and uh, bring you guys back. You know, maybe there's an opportunity to do some technical assistance as well uh, if we identify some um, vets who need to have kind of here and now education or walking through just the basics of, you know, you're looking at a college essay, uh, at possibly an entrance exam, as well as other transcripts from other colleges and, you know, your, your admissions application, how to get all that stuff ready to go. Um, a lot of times it seems overwhelming when you start down that process, but that, that important work has to be done. So, um, so I hope we can continue our conversations. Anything else you want to add or um, at, at the end of this? Um, no, I mean, this was great. I, w we will serve all veterans, um, but would love to work with more female veterans. Our, my staff is almost completely female veterans. So let's, yeah, let's get rocking and rolling. But please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, follow us on social media. And again, just share with any service member or vet you know, again, completely free and just here to help. I, I really believe in higher education as a pathway to your and so let's let's help you get there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate the work you all are doing and the work of your volunteers, your mentors, your ambassadors. Um, we want to make sure we see more women in higher education going to the schools that they choose and that they want to go to. Very big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, we're killing it out there. Women veterans and our educational attainment is just one of the best success stories and data points that we have on women veterans. So. I hope we can continue that work. So folks, if there's no additional questions at this time, we'll go ahead and wrap up this conversation. And again, this will be available to you on our website, uh, calvet.ca.gov forward slash women vets. And then if you go to our statewide webinars link, you can find it there. And then for all of our participants, we will also email you a video, uh, the PowerPoint presentation, and we'll ask you to fill out a survey too. Um, and so please bring us your ideas about future webinar topics and then join us on August 19th, Wednesday at 1 p.m. We are going to talk to um, a few folks with U.S. Vets and Irvine Valley College and a recent survey they did of women veterans on community college campuses. So we hope to uh, hear more about that on August 19th and we hope to see you there. And so follow us on social media or get a hold of us and uh, make sure to register for our upcoming webinars. Thank you so much, Christine. We really appreciate it and uh, best of luck to you and to service to school. Thank you. Take care, everyone.